Hello students, welcome to Gate Electronics Guruji classes. In this video, we will learn the concept of causal signal, the concept of non-causal signal and the concept of anti-causal signal. Let us first come to the definition of causal signal. The definition says that a continuous time signal xt will be a causal signal if and only if x of t is equal to 0 for all t lesser than 0 and a discrete time signal x of n will be causal if and only if x of n is equal to 0 for all n lesser than 0 and otherwise the signal will be a non-causal signal. Let us now try to understand what this definition means. The definition says that a continuous time signal xt the condition of causality is that for all possible value of time t, the value of the signal xt should be 0. This means that the complete waveform should lie in the positive time axis or in the right hand side of the amplitude axis. That is, no portion of the waveform should lie in the negative time axis or in the left hand side of y axis. As the value of the signal is 0 for all values of time t lesser than 0, this means no portion of the waveform of the signal should lie in the negative time axis or in the left hand side of the y axis or in other words the complete waveform should lie in the right hand side of y axis or in the positive time axis. For a discrete time causal signal also, the value of the signal x of n has to be 0 for all values of n lesser than 0. This means no portion of the waveform of the discrete time signal should lie in the left hand side of y axis or in the negative time axis that is the complete waveform should lie in the right hand side of y axis or in the positive time axis. And if some portion of the waveform lies in the left hand side of y axis then the signal will set to be a non-causal signal be it a continuous time or a discrete time signal. So a signal will be non-causal, be it continuous time or a discrete time signal, if some portion of the waveform lies in the left hand side of y axis or in the negative time axis. This concept will be more clear when you will solve these two examples. Look at example 1. The signal x1t, the waveform has been drawn with respect to the time t. You observe that x1 t is equal to at a constant value 1 for t greater than 0 and for t lesser than 0 you see the value of x1 t is 0. That is written here for all t lesser than 0 you observe that x1 t is 0. And you also see that the complete waveform of x1 t is lying in the positive time axis or in the right hand side of this amplitude axis or y axis. That is no portion of the waveform is lying in the negative time axis or in the left hand side of this amplitude axis. Hence clearly this signal is a causal signal. Now look at this example. You observe from the waveform of x2t that it is nothing but a sinusoidal signal. And you observe that some portion of the waveform is lying in the negative time axis from t equal to 0 towards left this is the negative time axis and you observe that some portion of the waveform is lying in the negative time axis hence clearly this is a non-causal signal. Let us now come to the definition of anti-causal signal. A continuous time signal x of t will be an anti-causal signal if and only if x of t is equal to 0 for all t greater than 0. And a discrete time signal x of n will be an anti-causal signal if and only if x of n is 0 for all n greater than 0. This means beta continuous time signal or a discrete time signal for the signal to be anti-causal the only necessary condition is that the value or the amplitude of the signal should be 0 in the positive time axis or in other words no portion of the waveform should lie in the positive time axis or the complete waveform should lie in the negative time axis. Let us come to this example one to have a better understanding. You observe the waveform of the signal xt. 
you see that xt starts at t equal to minus 1 and moves towards left. For all possible values of time t lesser than minus 1, you see that the value of the signal xt is a constant 1 and look at the positive time axis. You observe that at each and every possible value of time instant in the positive time axis, the value of the signal xt is 0. You observe that for all possible values of time t greater than 0, xt is equal to 0. Hence clearly this is an anti-causal signal. Observe the complete waveform is lying in the negative time axis and no portion of the waveform is lying in the positive time axis. Let us come to the example of this discrete time signal. You observe that for n greater than 0 that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up to n equal to infinity, the value of the signal or the amplitude of the signal xn is constant at 0. You observe that for all n greater than 0, the amplitude or the value of the signal is constant at 0. And you see that the complete waveform of the signal is lying in the negative time axis. No portion of the waveform lies in the positive time axis. Hence clearly this is the example of an anti-causal signal. Now come to a very important note. The note says, all anti-causal signals are non-causal signals, but all non-causal signals are not anti-causal signals. We know for a signal, be it a continuous time or a discrete time signal, to be a non-causal signal, the only necessary and sufficient condition is that some portion of the waveform should lie in the negative time axis. And the condition for a signal to be an anti-causal signal is the complete waveform should lie in the negative time axis. So clearly for an anti-causal signal for which the complete waveform is lying in the negative time axis, clearly some portion of the waveform is lying in the negative time axis. Na? If the complete waveform is lying in the negative time axis, then clearly some portion of the waveform is also lying in the negative time axis, which is the condition for a signal to be a non-causal signal. So all anti-causal signals are non-causal signals. But all non-causal signals are not anti-causal signal because for a non-causal signal some portion of the waveform should necessarily lie in the negative time axis but it is not necessary that the complete waveform is lying in the negative time axis. That's why all non-causal signals are not anti-causal signals. This point will be more clear from this example. Look at the signal. You observe that the value of the signal xt is constant at 1 when t is greater than minus 2. And for t lesser than minus 2, the amplitude of the signal is constant at 0 value. Now, you observe that some portion of the waveform is lying in the negative time axis. From t equal to 0 to t equal to minus 2, this portion of the waveform is lying in the negative time axis. So clearly, this is a non-causal signal. But the complete waveform is not lying in the negative time axis. Some portion of the waveform is also lying in the positive time axis. This is a positive time axis. So clearly this is not an anti-causal signal, but it's a non-causal signal. So all anti-causal signals are non-causal signals, but all non-causal signals are not anti-causal signals. So I hope that the concept of causal, anti-causal and non-causal is clear. And if you have any doubt regarding this, you can ask me about the doubt in the comment section. If you think you are liking my videos, then please subscribe to my channel. Uh, share these videos with your friends so that everyone can be benefited and uh, please interact with me in the comment section it's your likes your comments and your subscriptions to my channel that motivate me to make more and more videos for you thank you